Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Australian MMA podcast. Thank you for choosing your number one podcast in Australian MMA. There you go. It's the first time I said that. Probably the last. Uh, I'm the host, Mitchell Tinley. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Make sure you subscribe. If you're watching on Spotify, make sure you subscribe and leave a review. Uh, this podcast, of course, we're covering Australian MMA, uh, UFC guys do come, but if you want to know who is going to be the superstars, this definitely is the podcast uh, for you. And uh, specifically, we're in that transition period as our guest today is Lisa Kiriakou, who is 7-1 and one in her mixed martial arts career, and she will be competing at Road to UFC. And speaking of Korea, in China... I don't know. That felt racist. Uh, she'll be competing in China uh, against Yan Kui Hui. Hui. That definitely was racist. Uh, 24 and 4 opponent. I guarantee you I will find out the, the full name of her opponent. Uh, but Lisa Kiriakou has uh, got a huge opportunity May 19th at the US, UFC Performance Center in China. And she's taking on a stud of an opponent, 24 and 4, like I said. Now, Road to UFC is like a tournament. Uh, to promote the UFC in the Asia markets. Uh, and there's some fights that are not in the tournament that are sort of like, you know, uh, not filler, but like, you know, to still be an entertaining fight card that don't have direct sort of correlation in the tournament. And Lisa Kiriakou is a part of that. So she's got a huge opportunity. You'd say that it's uh, Jan's sort of fights and uh, Lisa Kiriakou's brought in with the hopefully... For the Asian market, they would want Yarn to win, uh, I believe. Um, but Lisa Kiriakou and everyone here in Australian MMA knows that she very much can win and we're putting all our money on her. If she wins and puts on a good display, she very well could pick up a UFC contract. We've seen some road to UFC guys before. Unfortunately, didn't go uh, well for either of the guys. Sean Etchell, I think, picked up a loss. And Quillen Southfield didn't actually get to compete when he was on road to UFC as his opponent got pulled because there was a uh, an injury or a weight class miss uh, and they moved that opponent into the tournament or something along those lines and Quillen Southfield, unfortunately, did not get to fight. But either way, if you're on road to UFC, you basically got, look at it as like the first interview um, of the UFC. You kind of, if you put on a good show, maybe you'll get a UFC contract, but you're definitely not a UFC fighter just yet. Uh, you basically really just get to pretend for one day. And if you pretend good enough, it will become real. So although that might've been super confusing uh, for anyone that doesn't know the UFC, just basically take it as this is, you know, five, six years in the making uh, for Lisa Kiriakou, she's had eight fights leading up to this moment. If she can dominate and put on a great display, she should pick up a UFC contract and uh, we wish her all the best. Of course, I'm recording this before chatting to Lisa Kiriakou, so I have no idea what we're going to chat about, but I will definitely ask her uh, about the preparation, obviously the lead up to this fight. Um, I might even get her thoughts on the Eternal MMA 84 matchup between Amina Hedaya and Jacinta Austin. She's got history with both those women who are competing for the flyweight title uh, in Sydney on May 24th. But uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, well, she'll be joining us in a sec by the power of editing. I'll cut and you'll hear her like next. Uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Lisa Kiriakou. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show all the way in China. Uh, Lisa Kiriakou, welcome. Who's the half naked man behind you? Oh, can you see? <laughs> My fiance. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, I love it. Get... I love it. I think it's hilarious. He's not naked. We're just laying there. <laughs> so, yes, we are in the uh, hotel room. Uh, well, it's a I pretty mean, small one. So, talk talk about it just in general. I mean, like the the fight comes along. Uh, you get. I, I guess you didn't assume you'd get the UFC call up in China. How's that feel? Yeah, cool. Like, oh, honestly, this whole experience, like, it's just been unreal. Like, when we found out about the Road to UFC, uh, I wasn't expecting it to be like this, this intense, not intense, but like, oh, just everything's amazing. Like, Simon reckons that it's basically, it feels like the UFC with, with the way they're treating us. So, it's been so good. Honestly, cool. it's very surreal, this whole experience, to be honest. 
I think the, I mean, because Simon uh, Carson, of course, uh, has helped out Jack Jenkins and, and whatnot in the UFC. I, I think, do you think it's because the UFC and China, like they're really trying to build that? Because is this fight at the UFC Performance yeah. Center in China? They do, yes. Is is this where the, the fight is taking place though? It's where, yeah, it's where the fight's going to happen at the PI. Uh, how's that? I mean, do you know how many people will be there? I don't actually know. When I've been training there the last couple of days, I've seen them setting the cage up, but I'm not even sure if there's an audience there. I'm not I'm not entirely sure to be honest. But um I know it's going over two nights, but I'm not sure who will actually be there. So it should be interesting. I feel like it could be quiet, but we'll see. You say it's over over two nights. Do you know what night you're on? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm in the Sunday. I'm pretty sure the the people that did the um the whole series possibly on the Saturday and then the one fight deals on the Sunday. I could be wrong, but yeah, obviously I'm just having the one fight, thankfully. So yeah. Does it feel weird being like, cause I know that Quillen Sauke, when I talked to him about this as well, like you kind of feel like a weird filler about like <laughs> you're like brought in, it's your biggest opportunity, but for the Asian market, you're kind of just like, you're there. Yeah, oh, for sure. Like, you know, it's kind of like the one fight, I guess, where, you know, one fought me into fight, one to go on, you know, probably didn't want me to win that. And, you know, I did. So I feel like it, it's a bit of a same, similar situation, but different as well because it's for a UFC event. So I feel like it's also different in that sense. Yeah. But, um, did- yeah, look, I like coming in another person's country and being the underdog, that's for sure. It makes me strive to do better. So I'm keen. Is is it weird to kind of like everyone talks about like either not getting your dream or getting your dream and you've like kind of got your dream? Because I can only imagine that if you got one UFC fight in Las Vegas and then you retired and you never got like you still go, you go, boom, I made it. Where this one, I feel like I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you wouldn't be totally satisfied if this was the peak of their career. No, for sure. Like, don't get me wrong. The fact that I've got here and in such a short time, like I've not been doing this long at all. Um, so the fact that I'm here today doing this, I'm very happy with, and I'm gonna always look back at this and be very grateful. But I'm not gonna be satisfied until I get, you know, to the ultimate goal. But this is still a very cool experience. Like everything's just been so amazing. So I'm really happy with this. But yeah, not satisfied fully. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know if it's like? Oh, you you win, you 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 know, we, we're definitely gonna sign you, or is it literally just like a hey, we're not promising anything kind of we just wanna have look, a look? Look, it's like contenders, you you don't know for sure. Some people go on contenders, they win, they don't get signed, they go back, whatever. Whatever's meant to be will be, I believe. So we'll see. I just wanna get the job done. I'm not even focusing about the next step. My main goal now is just to get the job done and whatever what happens next is meant to be my journey. So have you no is there any pressure to ever i mean i know every fighter goes out there and tries to finish i've talked to joseph luciano about this before as well but do you do you feel the pressure to go and finish or for you is it like nah just get the win no matter what look i previously i did get told that i needed to get another finish uh and that in my like local fights that i was going to have was the game plan for this one definitely going to look for it but once again, I'm fighting a very, very experienced hard opponent. I think me just taking a win over this opponent, like she's 24 and 4, whole lot of experience, mm. very tough fight. I feel like a good win is going to be great, but obviously a finish is also going to be good. Um, So I'm happy with both, to be honest. I just want to put in a really good performance in the end of the day. And uh, when this fight came about, I mean, uh, I think you're are you officially signed with Dime, Dime Group now. Is that... With that, yes, with recent, correct. yep. So, did they yeah. did they give you a call? Did Simon get the call? Like, how's the whole process? How did it all work for you? Yeah, it was actually a bit random for this. So, they actually, I can't remember who exactly, but the one wrote to UFC guys actually reached out to Hex, which is oh. random. Um, and then <laughs> the Hex guys, yeah, I, maybe they thought I was signed to Hex. I'm not actually sure. <laughs> and then they actually contacted Simon. Um. So yeah, it's a bit of a random one how we actually got this. Oh, it's sorry. very, very random actually. But fuck Reese. <laughs> so Reese did nothing. No, not at all. No, <laughs> Reese has been amazing. Like, look, we're all like the way it first started was 
yeah, through Hex to Simon, then to Reese, you know. But <laughs> Reese has oh, been so helpful. Everyone has. Um, yeah. He's been amazing in all of this. So, yes, definitely not. I, imagine, <laughs> imagine Reese turned around and he's like, look what I just got you. Like, it was all <laughs> it was all me. Oh, look, he, he does so much. So, honestly, it doesn't even matter how it, it started. The fact is that he's done so much this whole journey. <laughs> so, that's all that matters. And, uh, I mean... I was you, yeah. <laughs> your, your, gym, your gym, absolute MMA calling, will put up a really nice sort of collage of photos of uh, your entire oh, career terrible. where I think it said started in 2018 and your amateur career and, and working. How did, how does it feel to kind of look back on all of that? And like you said, in such a short time and now you're here. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Like I, sometimes I forget how, like I didn't, I've been doing this for six years, whatever I joined the gym. I look back and I think, Oh, I've actually done so much. Seeing that I've started this sport so late in my life. You know, I was like 24, almost 25 when I started. So, yeah, it's bizarre. And that, that's why I said, like, the fact that I'm at this point now, I've got this opportunity, even just to be on the road to UFC in China right now, it's just so unreal and I'm very grateful. And, yeah, really, really happy. You know, I've put in a lot of hard work to get here. So, yeah, really happy. Is this one of those moments where, you know, you're finally in the UFC, you're like, boom, I made it, I got all this money, I'm bowling? Or is it? does it compare to the regional paycheck? This this fight here. Yeah. Look, it's pretty it's decent, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm definitely happy with the pay. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm balling, but look, it's definitely a big change from the local scene, that is for sure. Um and yeah, speaking of, as you would hope it would be. Uh, um speaking of the local scene, are you still keeping an eye on it? I mean, you've you've gone really international, almost sort of left it behind. But, I mean, there's some good fights still around, girls you've competed against before, but do you still keep an eye on it or are you really just like you never want to kind of fight in Australia again? Oh, look, as it like the goal is the UFC and I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get there. So, look, let's hope the game plan is, you know, we get this fight, we get on the Perth card, hopefully, see what happens. If it's not the case and I need another one, so be it. So, yeah, look, I was happy after my one fight. Like, I was pretty keen not to go back locally. And then it almost happened that I had to. I'm like, all right, that's fine. Get another opponent, hopefully get a finish, and then hopefully get on, whatever. Didn't happen, but I was willing to go. That's I want to say step backwards, but go locally again just to get that next step to my so, goal. So you're not like – you don't seem pressed for time. Like You don't seem like you're stressing, like it's got to happen this year, it's got to happen this year type thing. Are, are you happy with kind of being well, patient? I feel like I feel like at the point I'm at, something big is going to happen this year. So I don't know. I feel like I'm already there kind of. But, yeah, I think I'm on a very good path. I'm not freaking out too much. Being in China, is it like <laughs> – is it what, like, I know they're probably watching you right now, but is it, what's it like? Is it, is it what we kind of all think? Like, is there, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but like, what, what is being in China it, like? Look, so I did not think it was like this. It's actually, the city is amazing. So I've been actually doing a lot of touristy crap and I've been <laughs> loving it. Like, it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful place. The food's been amazing. Like when I've been able to eat. Um, When we first arrived, like, it's very strict. So getting like my partner trying to get on the internet took days. So he couldn't get a VPN and obviously not allowed on any social media or WhatsApp or whatever. So that was a bit of a struggle. Also like even pulling money out or using a bank card, you can hardly do. So there's definitely a few struggles around with that sort of thing, but yeah, we're getting the hang of it now. <laughs> so are you allowed on a VPN? Because I don't live here, yes. I hope so. <laughs> or, like, if I go missing tonight, if I go missing tonight, just remember this conversation. <laughs> we have I, just, footage. I just had me thinking. They were like, okay, you're not supposed to use Facebook and everything in China. And I was like, well, that's how we've just communicated. So I was like, <laughs> Does that... <laughs> I think so. Apparently, if you don't live here, you can. As I've been told, I hope that's the case. <laughs> what, by <about> Simon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Speaking of your head coach, how's your weight cut been and watching him just eat uh, as much food as he wants? He's been going hard, hasn't he? <laughs> um, no, honestly, this is the lightest I've actually been 
close to a fight. So my weight is so good. There's not a worry in the world right now. It's been good. As I said, the UFC guys, are they're making our meals fresh every day. Uh, they send them to the hotel and they have a lot, a lot of good food. So I'm actually quite satisfied. It's the first time I've ever been so satisfied whilst water loading. So it's been so good and easy. Awesome. Now, um, just before I let you go, prediction of the fight, how's it going? Oh, I've seen a few different things happening. I'm going to keep to myself. Okay. That's is what it, I'm going to give you. Is it, okay, is it you anything of hers? <laughs> is it anything of hers that the like concerns you? <laughs> look, she, <laughs> the government's going to tell everyone. <laughs> um, look, she's very physically, very strong. You know, you look at her yeah. physique. She's quite jacked. Has a powerlifting background, you know, likes takedowns, wrestling, you know, I'm prepared for everything. I, yeah, we were, look, we've studied all the fights and we have a very good idea on what's going to happen. She's going to come out very hard. Um, but yeah, I'm ready for anything that comes my way. It's going to stay awesome. content and yeah, work the game plan. Awesome. Um, and before I, I do let you go, one last question. Uh, Eternal MMA 84, May 24th. I mean, her day of us, Jacinta Austin. Who wins? Jacinta. Easily? Definitely Jacinta. Yeah. Look, Jacinta's strike. Like, Jacinta's a very good striker. You know, she's got a lot of history in her striking career. Amina, I don't know. She can't. Yeah. The strike is definitely not at Jacinta's level. That's for sure. So, mm. yeah, I definitely see Jacinta winning this. Do, do you think what either about of those? You? Do you think either of these girls can don't Alden Bates me? <laughs> well, he did to me at the press conference, and I was like, I hope it's a draw. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> um, no, but do you, do you think any of those girls or any girl in Australia can kind of who's the next one to sort of get to this level? Oh, I think Jacinda for sure. She's got a very good record. She's you know she's up there and she's fought internationally. She uh. uh as I said, a striking background definitely will help her out. So I definitely see Jacinta being next, that's for sure. Um, I think Amina would still have a few to go. But, awesome. yeah, I definitely see Jacinta being next up. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she, you know, she wins this fight and got on the Perth card. Hopefully for her she does, yeah. Awesome. All right, and before I let you go, what's yeah. the first thing you're eating when the fight is over? Fight or weigh-ins? No, nah, fight, fight, fight. So, yeah, well, give, okay. me, give me both, give me both. All right, weigh-in, pancakes, mm -hmm. and pasta. Uh, after the fight, I'm going to go get hot pot or yum cha. I'm in China. I'd be rude not to. <laughs> <laughs> I've been true. craving hot pot, though. Yeah. I've really been craving it. So. Yeah. Uh, they've actually got us a buffet breakfast every day here. So it's unreal, honestly. I've been getting, like, my omelets made freshly. <laughs> so it's been good, and the guys have been enjoying it so after Jeez. the wanes i'm going to order pancakes and then smash the buffet <laughs> i love it all right thank yeah. you so much for your time i know you're a busy person um i appreciate it and i will see you on the other side of your victory thanks mitch good to talk again have a good day